So you bought at the peak of the market, but are now closing on that home as the market starts to level out? It's understandable that you automatically react with panic and fear and are maybe considering backing out of that deal. Well, we've all been hearing about this all over the media, but what we don't hear are the significant consequences that you can face if you decide to walk away at closing after signing a firm purchase agreement. In this video, I'm gonna answer three questions that are commonly asked when clients are thinking of backing out of a real estate transaction. If you would like to continue to watch videos like this one that provide education and value in regards to real estate, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's get right into the questions. What happens if I back out of a deal? So first and foremost, buyer's remorse is not a justified reason to back out of a firm real estate deal. Regardless if you feel you overpaid or if your financial circumstances have changed, those reasons cannot outweigh the potential consequences of walking away from a firm deal. Walking away at closing after you sign a purchase agreement can have significant legal and financial consequences. The bottom line is, when you back out of a signed and accepted purchase agreement deal, it will cost you big time. Right away, you lose the deposit you submitted with your offer, and on top of that, you're at risk of being sued by the seller for money they have lost on the sale of their home. For example, say you put in an offer to purchase a home for $900,000 and signed a contract, and this offer was accepted and firm, but then you backed out of the deal so the transaction does not close. The seller then has to put his home back on the market, but ends up having to sell to another purchaser for less, let's say $850,000. In this scenario, the seller is within their rights to sue you because you're the one that backed out of the original deal for the difference in the value of the two deals. So on top of losing your deposit, you now owe an extra $50,000 to compensate the seller for their losses. And it doesn't end there. Say the seller has already put in an offer on another home and was planning on using the profits from selling their current home for their new home. If the seller is not able to carry out the purchase of their new home as a result of the purchaser backing out, the purchaser of the current home may be liable for losses from that transaction as well. So as you can see here, backing out of a firm deal can cause a huge domino effect of issues. This brings us into the next question. Are there legal ways to back out of a deal? The simple answer is yes. There are legal ways to back out of a deal and they are based on contingencies that have not been met. A real estate contract can have a number of contingencies. These are the conditions that need to be met in order for you to move forward with the purchase of the home. Some common contingencies that home buyers might include in their contract are conditional upon home inspection or conditional upon financing. That's one that's pretty familiar. Another one is selling their own home first or another one is um, home appraisals that comes in for less than the sale price. So for example, let's say the home inspection report comes back and they are costly issues, such as damages to the roof that needs to be replaced or cracks in the foundation. With a home inspection contingency in place, you may be able to walk away from your deal, especially if the seller refuses to fix the problems or offers credit to offset the cost. As for the financing contingency, if you don't end up approving for a loan from your lender, you can then back out of the deal as long as this condition has been included in the agreement. In other words, the deal is automatically void if the conditions in the agreement are not fulfilled. There could also be reasons outside of the contract's conditions that will allow you to back out of your contract without penalty, and that is why it is essential for you to seek advice from your lawyer. With all that being said, I hope I have made it clear how important it is to understand the purchase agreement that you sign and know when and how to add any conditions to protect yourself from unexpected circumstances. This ties us into our next question, how to avoid the risk of backing out at closing. So the best way to avoid risk and regret is to consult with your realtor and lawyer before signing any agreement purchase of sale to determine if there are terms or conditions that should be added to the agreement that will protect you as the buyer. Setting the right contingency within the contract is the best way to protect yourself from some of the most common issues home buyers encounter. Every individual circumstance will be unique, so it's important for you as the buyer to be transparent and honest with your realtor and lawyer so that they know what conditions would be required in the contract to protect you in the worst case scenario. Basically, if it's not in writing, it doesn't mean Buying a home is a serious commitment and shouldn't be taken lightly. It may be tempting to waive any conditions, especially when you're competing against multiple offers, but you need to make sure you're in a situation where everything is lined up and will be able to follow through in the end. If this is not the case, and it would be best for you to have added conditions in your place to protect you, then consult with your realtor and lawyer before signing anything. 
Educate yourself about the key components in your purchase agreement. Read everything in full and don't hesitate to ask your realtor or lawyer for any clarifications. Do not leave anything to chance. I hope this video has given you insight on what can happen if you end up backing out of a deal without conditions and now know what is needed to protect you as the buyer and avoid any unforeseen risk. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.